Welcome, beautiful people, and welcome. In this video, we are multiplying polynomial expressions by monomials. So these are terms that do not have pluses and minuses in them. Uh, negatives, for example, this one here, that's fine. But what is I'm referring to pluses and minuses that separate different terms. So this is only one term that we're multiplying uh, by. It could be by a pun polynomial. It could be by a binomial. But we are multiplying that one term. Just a quick refresher on our exponential properties. If you have, and again, for all of these, you have bases that are the same. So if you have a base that's the same, that is being multiplied, the exponents here are going to be added. So you keep the same base, you add the exponents when you are multiplying. When you have an exponent that is being raised to an exponent, so like 3 to the power of 8, x cubed to the power of 8, you're going to take those two exponents and you're going to multiply them. If you have a negative in your exponent, that means that the base and the numeric exponent, not the negative, but the numeric exponent, belongs in the denominator. For the quotient dividing, you're going to take your numerator exponent minus your denominator exponent. And again, the bases have to be the same. And for the last one, we have x to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. 8 to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So how do we actually multiply these monomials? So if you have a monomial times a monomial, you're going to combine like terms in a way that you're simply group them. Group terms that are alike. So let's actually do that here as a thinking bubble. So group like Objects, let's, I'm thinking of a, of a good word that it is. You're just group like things. So what I mean by that is I see a 6 and I see a negative 4. Those are numbers. So I'm going to be saying 6 times 4. Next thing I see, what do I see that it are the same? I see an x that's the same and I see an x to the 4th that's the same. Now that's okay that the exponents do not match. The bases match. That's why multiplication is king. The bases match. And when you have multiplication, things just work out the way you want it. And this should be a negative 4. That was my mistake. Then you simply multiply things that are alike together. So 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. And here's where your first property comes in. If you have two bases that are the same, x and x, and you're multiplying them together. So let's shift back up here. You're multiplying bases that are the same with exponents. That means you're adding the exponents together. So that means I have x, 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. So that means my final answer is negative 24. x to the seventh power. Let's do that one more time. Again, group the things that are like. So I have just 11. I don't have a number here. Yes, they are in the exponents, but we don't really want that. So 11 is on its own. Next, I see an x and an x cubed. So I'm going to group those together. And again, this is all being multiplied. And then for the last one, I have a y and a y squared. Group those together. And again, that's okay that the exponents don't match. Looking here, I have an x without an exponent. That means the exponent is 1. Looking here, I have a y without an exponent. That means the exponent is 1. So let's multiply. I have a base and base that are the same. I am multiplying these with exponents. That means I am adding the exponents together. Same thing here. I have a base and a base that's the same. Uh, that means I am adding my exponents together. 11 is just lonely, so it gets brought down. For our final answer here, I have 11. x to the power of 1 plus 3, that's x to the power of 4. And y, 1 plus 2, that is 3. So our final answer is 11 times x to the 4th times y to the 3rd. Now let's complicate your life a little bit. So what if we have a polynomial and we are multiplying it by a monomial? 
in a way you're kind of foiling it if you've heard of foiling before but in reality what you're doing is you're distributing it to all terms so take the monomial and you are going to distribute this to all terms by multiplying now I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this first way is the horizontal way so 3x times the first term, 3x squared, plus 3x times the second term, which is a positive 6x, plus 3x times the last term, which is a negative 5. Now that we are here, we now combine just like we did the monomials. So we have 3 and 3, so we have 3 times 3, and then we have x and x squared, so x times x squared. There is no exponent on x, so we're just going to put a 1 there. Now we have 3 and 6. Again, we are multiplying. Even though this is a plus, we are multiplying. 3 times positive 6. Then I have x and x, so x times x. And I have 3 and negative 5, so 3 times negative 5. And just a lonely x, which gets brought here. Let's multiply the numerics together. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Now let's deal with the exponents and the rules and such. Again, when we are multiplying exponents with the same base, that means we are adding them. So here's my base, x. 1 plus 2 is 3. Here's x and x, remember? If there is no exponent, it is a 1. So I have x to the first power, x times x to the first power. That means I have x 1 plus 1, so I have 2. And here we just have our lonely x here. So here we have our terms for our final answer. Now we cannot continue combining these x cubed, x squared, x, because we have no longer multiplication, we have addition. The higher in math you go, the more addition and subtraction kind of ruins things for you. Multiplication, you could just combine them all, multiply them all, and have a good time. Addition and subtraction, they ruin it. So this is practically done. The only thing that we can continue doing is perhaps simplifying it just further, writing it in standard notation with decreasing exponentials and then simplifying it so we don't have plus a negative, we just have minus 15x. So a different way of doing this, I'm going to bring out another sheet of paper, is called the box method. Now the box method helps especially when you are doing polynomials times polynomials, but it also works with a monomial. So our original question was 3x times 3x squared plus 6x minus 5. So whenever you're multiplying this, you're going to draw a box. It doesn't have to be a big box. I think this box is way too big. But you're going to draw a little box. On the top, you're going to write one of your polynomials or monomials, whatever you're multiplying with. And when you're writing it, try to separate, separate each term. Then you take whatever you're multiplying, in this case, 3x. And what you end up doing is you're going to create boxes and columns. So if we had more than one term here, uh, it, would, it would be more rows. But since we have one term here, then you can multiply it this way. 3 times 3 is 9 x times x squared is x, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 times 6, so it's like a multiplication table. 3 times 6 is 18. x to the first power times x to the first power is x squared. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. There is no x here, so I'm just going to bring the one that I have here. So you may choose to like this method better. I know a lot of students do like this method better because it's easier to organize your thoughts and not lose anything. But make sure that you are treating them with like terms. So number gets multiplied by number. Variable gets multiplied by a variable.
what happens when we have multiple variables? For example, in question number two. So I, not only do I have x's, I see y's in here. So it complicates our life a little bit. So let's do the original way, the vertical way, and we are going to combine and distribute first. So I am taking my monomial, right, and I am going to distribute this. I'm going to multiply this by all terms. Now remember, terms are being separated by pluses or minuses. So here's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. So we have one, one, two, three, four, five terms. So it's definitely a polynomial. Let's write this out. So this is Write a little bit smaller because this one is a little bit longer. So I have 11x squared y cubed times, first one is x to the fourth, plus, that's the first one. Now I have this one, 11x squared y cubed times 3x cubed y squared. This, this one, let's see if I can color code it. Maybe I'll run out of markers. Then I have 11x squared y cubed times 4x squared y. There. Oops, we're going to close that parenthesis. Then I have 11x squared y cubed times 8xy. And I did run out of rooms. So it's okay. I'm just going to write it a little bit underneath. And for the very last one, I have and 11x squared y cubed times 12x. And once we start multiplying this out, things should start to combine. And I didn't color code that last one, so let me color code it, which is here. Now that we have distributed our monomial, let's multiply it. Now again, you are multiplying like terms. So like numbers, number times a number, same variables, x times x, y times y, w times w, the letter variable has to be the same. Keep in mind your power properties, your exponential properties, your rules. When do you add? When do you subtract? If it's negative, things like that. So let's jump in here with the very first one. I don't have a number, so 11 is just 11. I do have x squared, and I have an x to the fourth, so those get grouped together, and I have y cubed. So this one is here. Let's jump a little bit even further. Since this is being multiplied, x squared times x to the fourth, that means my exponents are being added. So I have 11, 4, 5, 6, x to the sixth power. And I do have my y cubed that has not been touched. Looking at the next one here, I have 11 and I have a 3. So 11 times 3 is 33, positive. I have a y squared and a y, excuse me, that is an x. I have an x squared and an x cubed, so that goes together. And I have a y cubed and a y squared, so that goes together. 33 is just 33, but I do see that I have x's times an x, which means my exponents are going to be added. I have y times a y, which means my exponents are going to be added. So let's bring down the 33. So 33 positive. 2 plus 3 is 5, so I have x to the fifth power. 3 plus 2 is 5, so I have y to the fifth power. Moving on to our next one. I have 11 and I have a 4, so 11 times 4 is 44. I have x squared and x squared, so x squared times x squared. I have y cubed and y, y cubed, y. Now y doesn't have an very excuse me, y doesn't have an exponent, so it is an exponent of one. I may have to rewrite this on a different sheet of paper so that way we can get these separated out. So we have 44 x times x with variables, which means x to the fourth. We're gonna add these. Three, ooh, hold on. I made a mistake. This should be a y, so this should be a y, not an x. This is a y. 3 plus 1 is 4, so I have y to the fourth power. There's two more multiplications that I need to do, but I'm going to do them off to the side. So that one was, so I'm going to do dot, dot, dot to continue. That one we had is 11x squared y cubed times 8xy. 
and I had an 11x squared y cubed times 12x. So I see an 11, I see an 8, so I have 88. x squared times x, and I have y cubed times y, no variable, put a 1 in there. So now we have 88, we're going to add these, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, and we're doing the very last one which has 11 times 12, so really quickly, 11 times 12, I believe that's 121, but let me check. It is not, it is 132. So 132, then we have x squared and 1x. Again, no variable, excuse me, no x when you put a 1 there. Then we don't have a y, oh, we do have y, y cubed. We don't have a y here. So to simplify that out, this let's bring this one down, 88x cubed y to the fourth plus 132 x squared times x to the first power, that means x cubed, and we have y cubed as well. So bringing all of these together, I'm going to box them up here. So here's our first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and fifth term. So we have lots and lots of different terms in this really lengthy question. So let's write out our final answer. I just want to get all of this in order. And our final answer is, I feel like we should do a drum roll. 11 x to the sixth power, y to the third power, plus 33 x to the fifth power, y to the fifth power, plus 44 x to the fourth power, y to the fourth power, plus 88, x to the third power, y to the fourth power, plus 132, x to the third power, y to the third power. Ooh, so after multiplying that polynomial by a monomial, this is our final answer. All right, beautiful people, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one for more multiplication. Bye.